Are we really the United States of America? Today, our divisions run deep. Sometimes it feels as if there is so little to truly unite us. We don't understand our history. We don't teach our history. And the tough lessons that we've learned and that we've grown from. What if we, as a nation, took the time to reflect on the pivotal moments in history that made America the most prosperous and perhaps unique nation in the history of the world. There isn't a China dream. There isn't a Russia dream. There isn't an Argentinian dream. And in all the countries of the world, and I've traveled to over half of them, the only place you ever hear of a dream is the American dream. It's the freedom to go out and, and choose what you want to do and then chase it. And that's the, the uniqueness of America, is that um, it allows people to be people. It's up to us to understand the founders' intentions, because the American dream was never meant only for them. The founders cared about what we think. The founders did this not only for themselves, but for their posterity. The founders knew that by doing the right thing and working hard, they could experience true freedom. So let's come together as one people and seek to understand all the implications of our American dream. The basis of our political systems is the right of the people to make and to alter their constitutions of government. But the constitution, which at any time exists, till changed by an explicit and authentic act of the whole people, is sacredly obligatory upon all. George Washington. What comes to mind when you think of the American dream? A tired, outdated phrase? A campaign slogan? Fame and fortune? Well, the American dream, I think, to some extent, has been mischaracterized as, you know, who's the richest or who has the most things. Fundamental in the American dream is that it's your dream. You know, the American dream might be perceived by some as a material definition, but it's much more than that. It's about happiness. It's about opportunity. The American dream is being able to be successful however you define success. The American dream for one generation is different than another generation. The American dream for one individual on one street might be different for their next door neighbor. My daughter from the earliest days I can remember talking about you know, things, such things, it was she wanted to be a writer and, uh, and she ended up being a very successful writer. We've over-focused on that one-tenth of one percent that have achieved great financial success and, and we've ignored my brother, who his whole life wanted to run a ranch. There's been many times when the, in the ups and downs of a career, I've wondered who is smarter, Randy or me? Because he is very happy at what he does and uh, they live in a wide open place and kind of control their schedule more than, a lot more than I do. So again, it's, that's the great thing about America is that, is that we all have different things that drive us. We don't need to be the same. It is that element that allows us to reinvent ourselves continuously to be able to say my family may have come from this background, this neighborhood, poverty, different other social constructs, but we can dream, we can aspire, and we can achieve. You know, that was the thing that attracted so many people to our shores from all over the place. And uh, that's something that has to be fought to maintain. The American founding began well before 1776. Starting in the early 1600s, European powers established permanent colonies in the New World. The industrious people who freely immigrated to the American colonies sought one thing, a better life. Though the resources of the land and their work ethic set them up for success, limited government allowed them to thrive. Even today, the United States exists as a beacon of freedom to those around the world. To me, the American dream is freedom. I never knew what freedom was like until I came to the United States almost nine years ago. Just the freedom speech, being able to say what I think, I would have never done that in Venezuela. Like, if I did that in Venezuela, I would have gotten arrested. So I never knew what freedom was like until I came here. And to me, that's the American dream, freedom and the opportunities that my country couldn't have given me. Yet, many people today are skeptical of this dream. Is it really alive today? 
250 years later? I think the American dream is alive today. I think it has a lot of clouds over it by people who, who want to diminish America for whatever reason, and, and I don't understand it. Um, but I think the issue of, of trying to convince people that they're victims is, is a, a very much a cloud on the American dream. Because there's a natural tendency of human beings to try to control things, including other people. You know, that's why our, our Constitution was written the way it was. They studied all these other governments uh, from ancient times right up until the time where they existed and tried to create a system that would thwart that tendency to try to control other people. Well, one of the things that was unique about the founders is they were the political manifestation of the Enlightenment. They took advantage of the fact that people were open to new ideas and they could express themselves. They were a remarkable group of individuals. Yeah, in some ways, when I think if our founding fathers were alive today and they look at the country, they would just be amazed at the amount of success and prosperity that we have developed. But at the same time, like anything, if you follow a sports team, it's almost more interesting when they're on the rise up than when they've actually reached this level of being a champion. Uh, and I think sometimes you forget when you are a champion, when you've reached this level of prosperity in our society, what it took to get here. When the colonies decided to break from Great Britain in favor of their own political autonomy and economic independence, they formed one of the foundational documents of the United States government, the Declaration of Independence. This document articulated the inherent rights of the individual as well as consent-based rule. I love studying history, and one of my favorite books that came out of the American Revolution was a private by the name of Joseph Plum Martin. And so you look at the war through his eyes in this country that he wanted to form, and he just, he grew up having a king, and he bought into this concept that like, no, together we could form our own community. There is a, a basic fundamental difference in how they viewed success. They didn't want that success to just roll up to the monarchy. The way you had seen society played out for centuries. How can we expand, not just our, our monetary fortune, but how can we expand our definition of what our lives could be and should be. Now you're talking about who's writing the rules for what one's life's going to be. Once you draw that line in the sand, there's no coming back from that. And the fact that we're not subjects, we're citizens, that is that legacy we are pulling through to the state. It's a completely different uh, relationship with your government. Really, they dared to believe this idea that people are capable of self-government. And generations of Americans have stubbornly held to that proposition and tried to further it. So it's a continuing American dream that each generation of Americans has to decide that they're going to prove to the world and even to ourselves that we are worthy of this goal, of this proposition of a nation founded in self-government. To fight for their rights against Great Britain, the colonists built a consensus that there was a dream worth dying for. But what purpose could be worthy of their sacrifice? For this question, we have to turn no further than the Declaration of Independence. So it starts when, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands that have united them to another. They're trying to form one people, a single people, that's going to be united in a new people. And for what purpose? Well, they continue that we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. That is the North Star, the objective. And yet, with the shadow of slavery looming over the colonies, all men are created equal may sometimes ring hollow. Despite this tremendous stain on our nation's history, America's unique quality of self-healing ultimately paved the way for this phrase to truly become a reality. To me, one of the greatest attributes of America is the self-healing reality over time. I think it's one of the key attributes of what our founding fathers created in our Constitution, and that is the because it's we the people that determine our future, um, as we as a society have grown, we identify items that, that trouble us, discrimination, slavery, and it allows our society to self-heal. It's not a fast process, but we get to do it. They are inviting future Americans, us, 
to take on the responsibility of this project and to realize a fuller realization of our principles. When Jefferson penned these words, we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, and among them is life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. I don't know whose face he may have had in mind when he penned those words, but I can guarantee you this, that the day that he did pen those words, he guaranteed a day would come when I, as the great-grandson of former slaves in this country, would be sitting here in a free America. But a free America is never guaranteed. It is up to us to carry the American dream forward. Because every generation of Americans has to decide if they're going to rededicate themselves to the American dream, to this proposition that people are capable of self-government, and decide if they're going to become a people who have the habits of a free people and inculcate those habits in themselves. Because this proposition always depended on a virtuous and informed people who had the habits of free government. When you're born as an American, you are born with your rights and you choose which rights to give back to your government. That is the thread that carries on from 1776 to this day. The courage of our founders set America on an extraordinary path and the central thesis of the Declaration of Independence that all men are created equal would one day be fully realized. But sometimes self-healing requires sacrifice. Sometimes it requires war.